Okay, hi Sylvan. Hi. We just visited Garza Island yesterday and it was the most incredible thing I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely the most spectacular um, piece of, of uh, real estate uh, in the world. It was the most peaceful and beautiful and we saw all of the scarlet macaws and we saw the white faced monkeys. We missed the turtles, but not the right time of year yes, for them. And uh, we have a lot of good video footage for that. But tell us what made you decide to take control of Garza Island and do the things that you've done with it. Well, about 12 years ago, I visited uh, Garza Island like, like you have uh, yesterday. And I realized what was going on there, that there was a lot of poaching going on. And um, I saw the potential of Garza Island as a retreat um, for animals and, uh, and uh, for, for the birds, for the macaws. And uh, I purchased a different parcel of uh, Garza Island and eventually uh, the majority of it. Uh, Gaza is nine kilometers long, and it's a real paradise for birds um, and nature all together. We have the turtles coming during the uh, August, uh, September season, and at that season you see the trail of the turtles going through, and then you see the trails of the people looking for the, the eggs, and then you see the eggs being sold. Because, oh my gosh. Because of uh, the idea is that if they eat uh, turtle eggs, then uh, it's like an aphrodisiac, so they are very uh, eager to eat them. So we, um, we purchased that property, and then um, we put guards on it so that uh, that poaching would stop. And then... I decided to plant about, uh, well, I guess about 800 uh, uh, trees altogether um, of almond trees because we have a lot of scarlet macaws. We had a lot of scarlet macaws in the Osa Peninsula, but none of them were here. And so we planted those trees about, um, about nine years ago now. And uh, they grew and they started bearing fruit. And about two years ago, we started seeing the first macaws coming back to this area. And um, uh, we had last year three pairs that nested around uh, Gaza. And this year, we have about 60 birds that are coming to Gaza and that are flying all over Ocha and the uh, adjacent areas. And uh, it's a real pleasure to see the, the fruit of the work that has been done. And, uh, was the idea with the um, uh, planting the, uh, the almond trees, was it also to repopulate the species or was it to bring them into the area? Both, mm -hmm. both, because uh, the island is a very safe area for them to be in. So, um, unfortunately, there is a lot of poaching of, uh, of uh, those birds because those birds are about $1,000 on the market, so that would feed a family for a long time. So when they, in March, when they nest and the babies are still in the nest, but with the first feathers, people steal them from the nest in order to um, sell them. And uh, in Gaza, they are protected. We have uh, people that are controlling the visits of Gaza and uh, so that way uh, the birds can uh, nest in peace and um, mm -hmm. raise their young until they fly. Wow, that's, that's incredible. So, um, now you also have the, uh, I mean, we're, we're going to show some footage of the, uh, well, you've got some scarlets right behind you. Now, these, yes. are, these, are, uh, these were birds that were injured. Yes. And I think one used to be someone's pet and they couldn't take yes. care of it anymore. Exactly. And, um, and the other one was injured, was brought to me. Uh, it's a female, so that's good because now we have a, a, a pair. Mm -hmm. um, in order to see the sex of an animal, you have to take blood test and send that blood to the states. And only by blood test you can uh, determine the, the sex. So, so there's uh, no turning it over and looking for the plumbing. No way. No way. <laughs> there is no way. And even a vet has no idea. So I took blood from those two and their pair. And the female is very, very shy. And uh, I think she, she, she was hurt. And uh, she gets very stressed when there's people around to clock herself. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so she lives very happily now. And, uh,